So you know the basics of guitar, but you realize there's still lots to love to learn and you're ready to become an intermediate guitar player and do some things that are a little bit beyond those basics to improve your skills. In this video, I'm gonna give you 21 short tips that you can use to improve your playing as you get into that intermediate stage of guitar so you can become a better musician and expand on this great world. So let's get into it with tip number one. If you're trying to become more musical as a guitarist, a great way to do this is to hum the melody of the song you're playing in your head or even out loud as you're playing it. This does a few things. First, it helps you learn the song better because you're working on the melody and thinking about it and actually getting into the song more. And second, it gets you out of the trap of just thinking A chord four times, B chord four times, just playing like a robot. If you learn this, you'll learn the song better. You'll be able to get into it more, get out of your head and actually enjoying and playing and becoming more musical as a musician. If you want a way to learn a ton of chords really quickly, a great way to do this is with the cage system. There's just five chord shapes that you can move up and down the neck. You can play dozens of different chords. It'll really unlock the fretboard for you and you'll be able to see how pro guitarists play up and down the neck so easily. You can learn it in a day and for a quick example, it's just taking your chord shapes that you already know, like an E, and then sliding up down the fretboard. E, G, A, B, C, and so on. So just five chord shapes, you can play a ton of chords. If you're looking to add a little more spice to your playing, a great way to do this is by adding chord embellishments, which are basically just notes that you can play while you're strumming chords. So if I play something like this, it sounds kind of cool, it's really simple. All I'm doing is C to A minor, but then I'm putting on this pinky, then taking it off, and then taking off my first finger. Then when I switch to the D, I'm just adding my pinky, taking it off, and then taking off my second finger. As you get better on guitar, you're naturally gonna wanna try different things, and you might get bored of your open chords and try and play things more up and down the neck. This is really cool, but don't abandon your open chords because there's endless things that you can do with them that are really cool as well. One example of this is taking your open chords you already know and picking out the notes to create cool melodies and interesting things. Just using those simple chord shapes, it can be a great way to improvise and improve as a guitarist. Just using a few basic chords, you can create cool melodies that are gonna make your playing a lot more interesting and give new life to those same old open chords. A great way to make any chord more interesting is to not always play every string in the chord. By playing around with just playing your highs or your lows, you can add a lot more natural dynamics to those same old chord progressions, making them a lot more interesting. For example, if I play a basic chord progression, but on beat one, I play all the strings, and then on the next beats, I just play the high strings, I'm gonna get this natural up and down motion, which is gonna make that same old chord progression a lot more interesting. Play around with it, see what you like, and you can make a lot more interesting things out of the things that you already know. If you want to become a more interesting guitarist, learn to palm mute. Palm muting is a great way to bring a lot of contrast between a small, quiet verse and a big, loud, open chorus. To do it, just put the side of your palm somewhere on the bridge of your guitar and then play your chord. Don't get too caught up on the positioning because it's more about the rhythm for palm muting. Just make sure that you're not completely killing your strings, that you've actually still got some sound. Once you get used to that, you can combine non-palm muted and palm muted notes in the same chord progression to make things really interesting. lots of times when it's really useful to be able to mute strings with your left hand while playing. This lets you actually be a little bit lazier with your right hand so you can get into the groove better. Great example of this is your C chord. If you actually block the sixth string with your third finger so that it doesn't ring out, even if I strum all six strings, this one's not ringing out so it's still a nice chord. When you're playing to identify this for yourself, just listen to your chord and see if there's any notes that you don't want to ring out and then see how you can use your other fingers on your left hand to block them. For another example, if I play a D sharp minor right here, oh, that's a gross chord. 
But if I just mute this first string, suddenly it's pretty reasonable. If you want a guaranteed way to get a lot better at guitar really quickly, then check out my 14 day chord challenge in the link in the description of this video. It's gonna clean up your chords and strumming so you can play clear, fast chords every time and then strum in time along the songs. It's gonna make you a much better guitarist. Check that out in the link in the description below this video. When you're playing riffs or even solos high up on the guitar neck, often on your first and second strings, one thing that can happen is that your other strings ring out making your sound a lot muddier. Great way to stop this is to rest your palm on these lower strings there so that they don't ring out while you're playing. You're gonna come across this more often on electric guitar, but there's still lots of times in acoustic where it's relevant too. Don't neglect tone as a guitarist. Every single professionally recorded song you've ever heard, the tone has been specifically chosen to set the mood of the song. Tone's also a really easy way to make yourself sound a lot better, even if you don't actually get any physically better at playing guitar. It can be intimidating to start because it feels like you're learning an entirely new instrument. Here are the two things that you want to get started with. Whether you're playing electric or acoustic guitar, the two most important effects to get used to are reverb and delay. Reverb can make you sound like you're playing in a stadium for 100,000 people, even if you're just sitting in your bedroom. And delay is basically echo. It makes you sound a lot fuller and more interesting, and these two can add a lot of dimension to your play. Second tip is if you're playing a lead part, you're gonna to wanna to boost your high frequencies, and that makes your sound more upfront and in your face. And if you're playing a rhythm part, you wanna cut or lower your high frequencies to give you a fuller, richer sound and a lot more rhythmic part for rhythmic playing. So learning just these two things will go a long way to making your guitar sound a lot better and a lot more interesting. And just mastering these basics can give you endless possibilities for different sounds. If you've been playing bar chords for a while, consider trying thumb over bar chords instead. Some people find normal bar chords more natural. Some people find thumb overs more natural. It's honestly a personal preference thing. For me, my thumbs never really bent that well that way, so I don't tend to use them a lot. But that being said, there are some riffs that are a lot easier to play if you're using their thumb overs because they were designed with that in mind. The biggest point here is if your favorite guitarists tend to use a lot of thumb over bar chords, then it's probably worth learning for you, even if it feels a little unnatural at the start. Use your pinky as an anchor for more accurate picking. Whenever you're picking out a riff, put your pinky on the guitar body and rest it as you're playing, and it's gonna give you a reference point so that when you're picking, you can be a lot more accurate, playing things faster and cleaner than you did before. If you're struggling with your bends, this will help. First off, it's by far the easiest to do your bends with your third finger, but on top of that, if you also add in your second finger on the fret behind, you can use both to press the strings, making your bend a lot easier to do and more accurate when you're trying to hit the note that you're trying to make. When you're working on your bends and you're trying to get more accurate pitch, here's a great little exercise. Take the bend that you're trying to do and play each of the notes individually. Then try and do the bend. Alternate back and forth. Paying particular attention to the pitch of the second note so that you can hear it, this is gonna really help train your ear and make bends a lot easier for you. Learn to tune your guitar by ear. This is a great way to train your ear and make yourself better and more accurate as a musician. Obviously the hardest part here is the open string or having one string at the right note. But if you're just playing by yourself, get it close and it doesn't actually matter if it's exactly on pitch. All that matters is that each of the strings are tuned relative to each other. If you're playing with someone else, then make sure your six strings line up in the same note, listen to their note and match it on your guitar, and then just tune your guitar from there. When you're trying to tune your guitar, start with your fifth fret on your sixth string. That's gonna match the open fifth string. Same thing from the fifth to the fourth. Then moving on, Exactly the same. The only one that's different is your third string where you're gonna to need to tune your fourth fret of your third string to the open second string. Then you move on to the second to the first and it's back to the fifth fret. Work on getting these all the same and all in tune and you'll be a better musician and you'll have a better ear and you're gonna sound more musical. Be mentally prepared for plateaus when learning guitar. When you're just starting out, it's easy to see constant improvement and things are gonna be exciting, but eventually you're definitely going to hit a point where you plateau and you don't feel like you're making much progress. It's gonna happen for sure if it hasn't already. In these times, don't worry about it. 
Just chill out, relax, enjoy the things that you can play, keep playing, and eventually something's gonna come and inspire you, and then you're gonna make some more progress, and you're gonna make breakthroughs, which are gonna feel really great. Plateaus are gonna happen. If you wanna break them, check out my courses in the link in the description below. They're really gonna help you break through those points. Music theory can be a great way to get yourself out of a guitar plateau. If you find you've been stuck and not making any progress for a while, try learning something new or a new style of playing. Often when you learn something new, it's going to open up new possibilities that you didn't even know existed on the guitar, and there's probably a lot of easy things you can do to make your playing more interesting. When you add that in with what you already know, that's going to make you a lot more versatile guitarist and make you able to do a lot more interesting things. This improves your guitar and makes you sound better as a musician. Music theory is just an explanation for why things sound good musically. Don't settle for sloppy playing. You're gonna make a lot more progress a lot quicker if you focus on making each note crisp and clear and smooth, as opposed to trying to learn as many riffs and songs as possible, and then ending up with 20 songs you could play, but all of them sound bad. If your notes aren't coming out clear and crisp, play slower and decrease the speed until you can play it smoothly and crisply. Work on that, clean it up, and then I promise it's going to be a lot easier to play faster accurately if you've learned it slow and clearly first. Bar chords are way easier to learn on an electric guitar. If you've got an electric or access to one, it's going to be a lot easier if you start here and then work back up to the acoustic. Here are the five main techniques you need to learn to turn your beginner sounding riffs into intermediate level stuff. These are the five techniques you're going to come across most often and they are first hammer-ons, where you play your first note, and then hammer on to the string with your left hand to make the next note. Second is pull-offs, which are the reverse. You play your first note, and then you flick down for your second note. Third is slides, where you start on one note and you slide up to the next one. Fourth is bends, where you start on one note and you bend it up to sound like the next note. And then fifth is vibrato, which is just a bunch of little bends rapidly done. These are great for long held out notes. To use this in your playing, just try swapping out some of these techniques from where you would have just picked out these notes individually. Switch that with a hammer on. Adding these in will make your playing sound a lot more interesting. When you're learning to solo, it's easy to get stuck in the trap of just playing your pentatonic scale up or down in order. This gets pretty old pretty fast. Here's a cool way to break out of it, by using finger rolls. Finger rolls are just rolling your finger on the same fret of multiple strings. So if I start on the seventh fret with my third finger of the fifth string, and then I play that, then I just roll my finger down to the fourth and third string, you can play three notes pretty quickly and it gives an interesting, unique order that you don't often get. And this can be a step to breaking out of just playing your scale up and down. Adds new possibilities and tricks like this are ways to make your playing more interesting and your solos stop sounding so bland and boring. And there you go, there's 21 tips that are gonna help you improve on your skills beyond the basics at guitar. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button, say hi in the comments, and subscribe to see my future videos. If you want to improve on your guitar skills in the next two weeks, check out my 14-day chord challenge for guaranteed progress. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.